I'm going to show you how to use the Instant Pot. If you're like thousands of people who got one of these for Christmas, it might still be sitting in the box because you don't know what to do with it. I had a viewer send me an email asking, will you please just show me how to use it because it's intimidating and a little scary to even pull out of the box. It's really easy, but I will say it is no joke. So you do need to know how to handle it properly so you don't get severely burned because it's a powerful little engine in here. This is the Instant Pot Duo. This is the six quart. We also have the eight quart. I have found if you're using your Instant Pot, you're probably just trying to feed your family real quick or something like that. So the six quart has been surprisingly big enough for anything I've done so far. It has all these fun functions like rice and multigrain, porridge, really? Who makes porridge? I'm just gonna show you how to pressure cook in it because I promise that's all you're gonna use it for. So really you can get rid of all these other functions. The difference between this and a slow cooker is that it cooks it in a fraction of the time. When you cook in a slow cooker, you always wanna like sear something first, usually if you're making a stew, and then you put it in your crock pot and set it. Well, you can do everything inside here. So you can sear right in here and then add whatever ingredients and cook it in minutes. What you do need to understand is the amount of pressure that builds in here is really great. I have a good friend who has some major, major burns because she did not know to release the pressure. I'll get to that in a minute, but y'all, this thing is powerful. I have found the greatest use for the Instant Pots are cooking inexpensive pieces of meat that you generally require long cooking times. If you get home, like I do it, you know, around five o'clock, and then you still want to put a hearty meal on the table, but you didn't think ahead of time, this will be your friend. I'm gonna make some beef stew. Now, typically, you could put this in the crock pot that morning, but if you're not with it, like me, then you don't think about those things till later. This is like a pound and a half of meat. It costs like eight bucks. This is um, part of a chuck roast. So, you know, this requires a long cooking time to make it tender, and you just want it to shred apart. I'm gonna show you the quick way. This is not Sunday night or Sunday lazy day cooking. This is just fast that so you want to take shortcuts. So I'm just going to show you what I would do on a typical weeknight. Got your meat right out of the package, season it. And I'm going to brown it first just because it gives better flavor. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. We have tons of recipes for the Instant Pot that are approachable on Well Done Food. So look us up and you'll find lots of options. I like to put a little bit of flour in here to help brown the meat. I'm not dirtying up, lots of pans. I'm only gonna use one. First step is to get it hot through the saute function. This is also the function you would use if you wanna bring something to a simmer when it's done cooking. I'm gonna push saute. You can keep pushing saute if you want low heat, medium heat, or high heat. Just keep pushing the button. The time here is not that important unless you know you're gonna be using this function for 45 minutes and you can turn the time up. Then you have to wait and listen for the little click that says it's turning on. There it goes. So now it is on, saute, and it is gonna heat up. You're gonna wait just like you would waiting on a pan to heat up on the stove. It only takes a couple minutes. So while that heats up, I'm just gonna chop up the normal ingredients, carrot, onion, celery. But you will have beef stew on your table in less than an hour. If you wanna swirl your oil around, just pick this up. It's not that hot right now or you can swirl your whole thing around. Don't be scared of it. You don't want to crowd this, so you might need to do it in batches. Flour on it will help it get a nice crust, and then it'll also help thicken the sauce just a little bit at the end. I'm throwing it all in there at one time because this is a quick family meal. I'm also going to prepare a large pork shoulder. So this is another tough cut of meat, but also relatively inexpensive. So I'm making enough for probably four meals for my family for under $20 for the main dish. So that's good. This recipe I'm gonna show you is like super simple. So you can use it for barbecue sandwiches, pork tacos, Brunswick stew, whatever. All right, my meat is browned. I've got some drippings in there going in with my veggies. So, so far we're just cooking like we normally would on a stove. Another shortcut. Don't judge. So you just want to saute those just so the aromatic flavor kind of releases. And then some beef broth. You have to have a little bit of liquid. I mean, of course you're going to for beef stew, but even when we cook just a large piece of meat, 
you have to have some sort of liquid in there, even if it's a quarter cup, or it'll just burn. Everything will burn inside, and I don't really know what else would happen. I'm gonna put my meat back in, and now I'm gonna do about two cups of liquid, because this is a stew. It will release more liquid as it cooks. So now I'm all set for the pressure cooking part. Next is the lid. There's a little triangle on the lid that is supposed to match with a little triangle here. If you line the two up, then it fits perfectly on. You'll hear the little music, but it's not locked. You have to twist it to lock it. To pressure cook, you have to seal it up. So there's a valve on here that you need to point to sealing. I'm gonna seal it, and now we're ready to set the pressure cook. First thing you wanna do is cancel the saute function. And then you're gonna put pressure cook. They have all these pre-timed buttons here, like meat and stew. Those are just, the timing has already been set. If you don't wanna to have to guess or look up a recipe, you can hit one of those. I always try to test the power of the Instant Pot and see in how little time I can cook something. So I'm gonna do pressure cook and I almost always use high pressure. When you push it, it'll automatically go onto one of these. Just push it again and it moved to high pressure. So I'm on high pressure, now I'm gonna set the time. I think I can cook this beef in 25 minutes because they're not huge pieces. Y'all, that's unheard of. Normally you're thinking two to three hours at least for some slow simmered stew, but 25 minutes. Notice I set the time and it didn't come on until you hear the on button, just like in the saute function. What you need to know here is it's not gonna be 25 minutes from right now. The pressure has to build up and then it will start counting down. So while it just says on, that means the pressure is building. This is no joke. The amount of pressure is tremendous that is building inside of here. Because this one has a good amount of liquid in it, it's probably gonna take 15 minutes for the pressure to build before it starts counting down. Some people don't know that. They're like, wait, I thought it was gonna be on the table in 25 minutes. No, but to have a four hour dish on the table in an hour is pretty good. So anyway, we're gonna let that get started while I prepare the next thing. Small pieces of meat cut up. I showed you how to do that. Now I'm gonna show you that you can also do large cuts. If you want some pulled pork, this is a good meal prep meat. It's super inexpensive and a little bit goes a long way. So, you know, you can cook this once and get at least two meals out of it. But you know, this would take all day if you were gonna smoke it for some barbecue or something like that. Obviously, the smaller the meat is, the less time it's gonna cook. So this one is gonna cook longer than our, you know, 25 minute beef stew. So it's gonna take probably about an hour or so in the pressure cooker, but it's way less than all day on the smoker. I do this super simply with just garlic, salt, and pepper. Even though this is not gonna be a stew or a soup, you still have to put a little bit of liquid in the Instant Pot. Just because it's in the pressure cooker, it's not gonna taste like boiled meat. You could start this recipe just throwing it straight in, but I'm gonna brown it again just for more flavor. I'm gonna use the big one, but this will work in the six quart size. Again, saute to get it going. I'm going up to more so it's high. Again, if you just keep pushing it more, less, normal, that's like a medium to medium high, and this will be a higher heat. And we're gonna let it heat up. The beef stew is going. It has not started counting down yet. The pressure's still building, but you can tell it's getting close because it will start to let some steam escape out of the hole. The plug just came up a little bit, so the pressure is just about built and it's gonna start counting down soon. This is a good time not to let your kids near the Instant Pot. So once it starts doing that, you know you're getting close to the countdown. The less liquid you have in here, the quicker the time for the pressure to build. Steam is like the hottest form of water possible, hotter than boiling water. If you want some serious burns, get near steam. I know from experience, if you've got wallpaper or nice wooden cabinets, um, you probably don't wanna release your pressure under that consistently because it'll, over time, cause it to warp a little bit. These are also really easy to clean for the most part. Even things that get like stuck on here, and this has been used several times and it looks brand new. So it comes clean pretty easily. The part you need to know is this little ring that comes inside. Don't forget to clean that. Maybe you're gonna make a dessert in here. It will taste like beef stew or it'll smell like beef stew. When you go to clean your Instant Pot or the top, you wanna take 
this off. It's really good if you just get in the habit of soaking this in maybe some bleach water or some vinegar. I also will run this first through the dishwasher and then I'll let it soak in something. To me, the smell never really gets away, but it's better. You can also order just the rings. I think they're pretty inexpensive. And then to wash the lid, I just do soapy water and keep it clean. You don't wanna put this in the dishwasher. I actually don't know if it's allowed to go in the dishwasher, but I wouldn't do it. And then you just slide the little ring back on. This has to be on there or it won't seal properly. All right, so we're all browned. I'm gonna give it a flip. You do have to remember, again, you have to have a little bit of liquid before you can pressure cook. So I'm just gonna put like a half a cup of water in there. That's all we'll need. Okay, so lock the lid. Remember to turn the valve to sealing. That's important. This plug will come up when the pressure has built. All right, so we're locked. The arrow is to the lock position. We're gonna push cancel. Again, you gotta stop the saute process. Okay, now we're gonna pressure cook. These are pretty large chunks and it is pork shoulder, so I'm gonna go like 65 minutes, just to be sure. I want it to really pull apart and shred. It's gonna be so good. Now it's on, now the pressure's gonna start building. Because this only has half a cup of water, it'll probably only take about five minutes for the pressure to build. So we will have our pork in an hour little over an hour. All right, time is up. This is when you're either going to manually release the pressure or let it release naturally. Either way, you have to release the pressure before you can open this up. You need to push cancel. So basically what this is doing is telling you when it has the L, that means it's done and now it's just on low, sitting there until you release the pressure. To let the pressure naturally release, you would just do nothing. And it would take probably another half hour to release the pressure. I don't like that. So we're gonna manually release it. And I hope that 25 minutes was enough. So here's how you do it. And look, you have to be careful not to just knock it. You know, if you knock it even a little bit, it will start pushing that steam out and that can hurt you. This is the ceiling and this is the venting. We need to let it vent. I'm gonna use a towel just to be a little more cautious and I'm gonna knock it over to the venting side. It's releasing. You do not wanna put your face near that or your hands. Um, that's hot stuff. So just let it release. It'll take just a couple minutes. It's gonna stay locked until the pressure is released and that button goes down. If you try to force it, that's when you can get hurt. The silver plug has gone down, so that shows you that it's unlocked. So if you wanted to continue cooking something for a little bit, we've stopped it, but we're gonna turn back on the saute function and that brings it up to a simmer. Just gonna do like medium heat um, and I'm gonna stir in some frozen peas. If you wanted to like thicken your gravy, now is the time to do that. If you wanted to add a little roux or cornstarch or whatever, I'm not gonna bother with that today. It's not about the recipe. It's just about how to use your Instant Pot. I mean, you know, you can feel good about it. You made your family an affordable, healthy, non-processed meal in less than an hour after work, and it tastes good. All right, we're done. We're gonna see if this big pork shoulder is shreddable. All right, I'm gonna turn it off. Remember, we have to release the pressure. My favorite way to eat this is on some little soft rolls with barbecue sauce. It's gonna be the snack of the day. Mama's getting impatient. Do as I say, not as I do. Finally. Y'all, it fell completely off the bone in an hour. You can find this recipe for Instant Pot Pork Shoulder at Well Done Food on Facebook and YouTube. Look it up now that you're not scared to try your Instant Pot anymore. Comment below and let me know if you have any more questions on how to use the Instant Pot or if you wanna see me cook anything else in the Instant Pot or if you have another gadget you want me to try before you buy. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and like, comment, and share this post and click the bell for those notifications.